Hello again all. This is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 1H, Kinematics of Multiple Motions. Now we've already seen, when we looked at our uh, graphical analysis, uh, we've seen that one object can undergo several different motions one after the other. Um, we can treat situations like this mathematically uh, using the kinematics formulas um, with a couple of key facts about uh, successive motions. So we use the same three formulas. Right? We're familiar with these already. A problem of this type uh, might look something like this. We have an object that undergoes three successive motions. Uh, we're going to call them zone 1, zone 2, and zone 3. We have some data here uh, about zone 1. Here's the acceleration that uh, accelerates from rest. Uh, we have length of the time interval. Uh, we then have some information about zone 2, that it continues at a constant velocity for a certain amount of time. Then it's going to slow to a stop over a particular displacement in zone 3. So we're told that they're all in the same direction we can assume that they're all to the right. And then we're asked to fill in effectively all the kinematics quantities in the table for all three zones of motion. <clears throat> now again, we, we already know how to apply the kinematics formulas uh, to the individual motions. Uh, zone 1 is the first, and we have the most data there. Uh, we don't have any information about the initial position, so once again we can assume that that's zero starts from rest, the initial velocity is zero, we have the acceleration, and we have the time interval. So we apply the kinematics formulas, uh, we'll find that the final position is uh, 315 meters, and the final velocity is 57.2 meters per second. Um, we're going to leave out the kinematics for the uh, sake of brevity. We also have some information about zone two, you know, the duration of the time interval, uh, this may seem like it's not enough to get anywhere with zone 2. But the trick is, uh, the final velocity in zone 1 becomes the initial velocity in zone 2, and also the final position in zone 1 becomes the initial position in zone 2. So when we look at the uh, table, once we've done all the kinematics in zone 1, we're going to take this final velocity and we're going to transfer it right up into the initial velocity for zone 2. We're going to take the final position from zone 1, move that right up into the initial position for zone 2. All right, so again, we're going to leave out the actual solving of the problem. We know how to do these already. So we take this uh, 57.2 meters per second. That goes into the initial velocity here. 315 meters, the final position, goes into the initial position for zone 2. We also have the time interval. Now we also know because in zone 2 we have constant velocity, we know that the acceleration is zero, and we know that the final velocity and the initial velocity are the same. So we can take that 57.2 meters per second, transfer that here. Now we certainly have enough to solve the problem. Now all that's left for zone 2 is to use the kinematics to determine the final position. In this case it's uh, 2,380 meters. Again we uh, leave out the actual kinematics. We know how to do that. Now when we go to zone 3, once again zone 2 ends and zone 3 begins we're going to take the final velocity from zone 2, that goes into the initial velocity for zone 3, and the final position from zone 2 becomes the initial position for zone 3. So we put those in. We also know that in zone 3 the object slows to a stop. It implies that the final velocity is zero. We're also given the displacement in zone 3, uh, note that this is not the final position, but how far it moves in the interval. 
So knowing the initial position and the displacement, we can find the final position. which ends up being 2,490 meters. All that's left now is to apply uh, the kinematics formulas to solve for the acceleration and the time interval for zone three. And again, we know how to do that already. Once again, I'll reiterate, you need to show work every time in the manner that's been described earlier. First, you include the formula you're using, whether it's been rearranged or not. Then you substitute the data in, including the units. Then a simplified expression, the single number and a unit as your final answer. Uh, we already know that without the proper work, your answer is not any good by itself. Okay, WebAssign will tell you that you're correct, but you don't get credit until you submit properly done work every time. That'll do it for multiple motions. See you again next time.